Okay, today's lesson is going to be on fix it safe and we talked some already about food safety in the garden and this will kind of give an overview of general food safety to think about um, at home. So as we've talked about, um, a foodborne illness often causes nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, could be aches, fever, um, and even some neurological effects. Um, it's a foodborne illness, meaning that there's something in the food that is making you sick. Most of the time it's caused by bacteria or viruses, um, and often it takes time for it to incubate in your body. So it's usually not the last thing that you ate. Um, it could take anywhere from 12 to 24 hours to two to three days to, to have any kind of symptoms. And there's even some bacteria that can take up to two to three weeks before you have any symptoms. And so that's why it's difficult to often figure out what made us sick. Um, if you suspect that you have a foodborne illness, it's, it's a good idea to go to the doctor and then um, the doctor can report it to the local health department and they can investigate um, because sometimes it can be related to food that is served at a restaurant or a grocery store and that they need to figure out you know, where it's coming from so that no one else gets sick. So there's four steps for preventing foodborne illness and we're gonna talk about each one. Um, they're clean, separate, cook, and chill. So a little quiz to begin with, um, and we've already talked about this question in uh, the garden food safety lesson, which foods lead to the most illnesses? Is it meats? frozen foods, fresh produce, or canned foods? And so the answer is fresh produce. Um, we're eating more fresh produce and, and um, it's being, uh, more of it's being produced and if it becomes contaminated somewhere on the farm or in transport or whatever and we don't cook it, then there's the potential for it to make us sick. Based on the data from the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, how many people do you think suffer from foodborne illness every year? Is it 1 billion, 48 million, 340,000, or 1.4 million? And the answer is 48 million. And that's an estimate. Again, a lot of times people think it's the flu or a stomach bug um, when really it is a foodborne illness and they may not go to the doctor. Um, and so, uh, again, it's another reason why it's important to, to report it if you think you have it. Final question, what do you think is a common way foods become contaminated? And it's improper hand washing. And so um, we find this a lot with people that'll go to the restroom, they don't wash their hands, and then they go into the kitchen and prepare food, or they touch some kind of surface that then comes in contact with food. Um, it can be the same thing with the garden. If your hands are contaminated when you go into your garden, you can again contaminate the, the food that's there. So let's talk about cleaning. Washing hands. Washing hands can prevent a number of illnesses, not only foodborne illnesses, but respiratory illnesses and so on. And so anytime you're getting ready to um, prepare food, handle food, whatever, you need to wash your hands. When you're in the middle of food preparation and you change from one task to another, say you've been mixing up a meatloaf, when you have raw hamburger on your hands, you need to wash before you go make the salad. And then after, you've been to the restroom, you've played with your pet, again, any time you've contaminated your hands, you need to wash before you go and do something else. In the kitchen, we need to make sure that surfaces are clean and sanitized as well. And so start out with a clean dishcloth. Dishcloths should be changed every day. They get wet. They hold food particles and they're out at room temperature. And so it's just a great environment for bacteria to grow. So then you wanna use warm water and soap. And what that does is help remove any kind of dirt or food particles or anything that may be on the surface. 
Then the next thing we need to do is sanitize. And so we've cleaned, but clean does not always mean sanitized. Sanitized means that we have lowered the number of bacteria or microbes that can make us sick to a safe level. And so a little bit of bleach water um, will do that. And so a fourth of a teaspoon to two cups of water or a tablespoon to a gallon of unscented bleach needs to be unscented. The scent, if it's added, is not food grade. Then you wanna mix that up and then you wanna spray your counters and surfaces until they're wet and then you wanna give it time to dry because it needs time to work on the bacteria. You wanna change out your sanitizer about once a week because the bleach will evaporate. If you don't wanna use bleach because it will bleach your clothes and then it, you know, it could ruin them, um, you can use a commercial sanitizer, but again, you need to read the label and follow the directions to make sure that it's, you're using it properly and killing um, any microbes and germs that are there. Fresh <coughs> produce. The way to clean it um, is to wait and wash it right before you use it. Um, that helps keep it um, fresher longer. And then when you do get ready to use it, you just wash it in plenty of running water. You don't need to use any kind of dish soap, bleach, peroxide, anything like that. Again, it's the running water, and if it's a hearty fruit or vegetable and you can use a, a vegetable brush, you can scrub the surface to loosen any dirt or germs or bacteria again and then just rinse it away. Now we want to separate, and this will prevent the cross-contamination. So if you're doing several different tasks where you're handling raw meat and then you're gonna make a salad, it's a good idea to use a separate cutting board and separate utensils. If you don't have that many around and you need to use the same cutting board and utensils for those two different tasks, then just make sure you wash and sanitize. Uh, you wanna make sure you use separate plates for raw and cooked foods. Um, I see this a lot with barbecue is that we take marinated meat out to the grill and we put it on and then we wanna put the meat back on the same plate that has the, the marinade with the raw drippings. We don't wanna do that because you're contaminating the food. Think about how you're storing your food as well especially in the refrigerator. Um, here the chicken can drip onto the raw produce and the produce isn't covered. And so you can see how it can easily become contaminated. So what we wanna do is put ready to eat foods on the top racks that's in there, wrap them up to seal them away from germs and then put anything that can contaminate it onto a lower rack. And again, same thing with our cutting boards. You know, raw chicken should be by itself away from any fresh produce that we're gonna be eating raw. Then we want to cook foods. If we're going to cook foods, they need to reach the proper endpoint temperature. And the only way that you know the temperature is at the right um, temperature is that you need to use a food thermometer. And you can buy an instant read food thermometer at the grocery store or the discount store. Um, and then you insert it into the food and you wait and let it read the temperature as the food is cooking. These mini meatloaves um, here are a ground meat and they need to reach 160 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, again, uh, the only way to know that it's done is to use that food thermometer. Ground beef, depending on the age, of it, um, it can look brown and still not be done, still not be at 160 degrees, so you really can't go by color. Um, it can also be look pink in the center and be at 160 degrees and be perfectly safe to eat. So use your food thermometer. And then our last step is chilling or maintaining temperature control. And so what that means is that if it's meant to be cold, you wanna keep it cold, and if it's meant to be hot, you wanna keep it hot. 
Um, it's a good idea to have a refrigerator thermometer in your refrigerator, and it should be at about your refrigerator set to keep the temperature at about 40 degrees, 40 degrees or less. Um, I wouldn't go um, a lot below 40 degrees because um, then you may find some of your foods freezing. So, and then hot foods hot, you want to keep them at 140 degrees or above while you're serving. And the reason is, is that in the temperature danger zone, which is 40 degrees to 140, that is the temperatures that microbes really like to grow. And they especially like to grow at room temperature to hot summer temperatures when you're outside um, at a picnic or something like that. And so we wanna keep food out of the temp temperature danger zone as long as possible. And again, as I mentioned, bacteria needs time. So you've cooked your meal, you've eaten dinner, you need to get your food, your leftovers in the refrigerator within two hours. If you're outside in a picnic and it's like 90 degrees or higher, then it needs to be refrigerated within an hour. So keep in mind, time and temperature. We want to prevent time and temperature abuse. And then proper food storage in general. Again, thinking about how you're storing foods in the refrigerator. Is there anything that could drip onto ready to eat foods that where they can then become contaminated? Um, check the packaging, you know, are you covering foods and wrapping them up before you put them in the refrigerator? And then it's a good idea, especially with leftovers, to date them because we get busy and we forget and we pull something out and we don't remember when we prepared it and we wonder whether or not it's safe to eat. A good rule of thumb is to get rid of all leftovers within four days, and if it's a highly perishable food like fish or, fish or chicken, it probably should be thrown out within two days if you don't get it consumed. Odors, mold, other signs of spoilage are a good indication that the food has been in there for a while. But keep in mind that the bacteria and, and the microbes that make you sick, you're not gonna be able to taste them or see them. And so you could eat something that tastes just fine and it can still make you sick. So it's a good idea to date things. Um, I have a number of handouts that I will be providing on cupboard, refrigerator, and freezer storage that will help with um, knowing when to, to throw foods out. Um, there's also an app and a website called Food Keeper that has lots of great information on um, food safety and how long to store foods for quality and freshness as well as food safety. And then um, the last thing is, is I will give you a handout on at-home food safety that goes through in more detail a lot of what we've talked about today.